Hey everybody, and welcome back to Live Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, Jack and I still like Jackson, and it's time for another experimental thing with Oz. Uh, yeah, this might might not work. I don't know if this will ever see the light of day, so patrons will probably see this one because it'll be with our bloopers and stuff. So, I lucked out and found some pork belly, and I wanted to cook it, but I usually candy it in the oven or on the grill, but it's been being wet outside. Don't let this light fool you. And I have access to an air fryer. So we're going to try it. It's not a crock pot, people, so let's just jump into it. Before we do, be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring us a little bell. Give us a thumbs up. We very much appreciate that like, man. We very much really need those. And uh, check out our merch link down on the thing. Man, we got some awesome stuff. Check it out. Trust me. It's cool. Let's get into the recipe, man. Quit wasting time and watch me pack up some pork belly. <laughs> All right. So first things first, you want to get some pork belly. Not bacon. It's a lot thicker than that. We'll get into that in a minute. I got this for like seven, almost eight bucks. Going to need some salt and pepper. That's easy enough, right? Just salt, some pepper. Uh, some garlic powder because it's us. Why not? You're going to need some kind of oil. Now, I got olive oil that I'm going to use, but you can also use like vegetable or canola oil. That works fine, too. Uh, and then some brown sugar. Uh I still don't know the well, the measurements and an air fryer. You can use this in the oven as well, but I'm going to use an air fryer on this just to show you how it's done. So, like I said, the recipe didn't come with any kind of measurement, so we're just kind of shooting from the hip here. So, I ended up using uh, half a cup of oil, which worked out perfectly. Uh, half a cup of olive oil in mine, and then three tablespoons of the brown sugar. Now they're not flat level because that's eh, the South. That's how we do brown sugar and garlic powder here. So uh, it's kind of flat. Makes a ball. Looks cool. So three of those to put into your half cup of any kind of uh, oil. Like I said, I used olive oil. You can use uh, any kind really, uh, vegetable or canola. That's fine. And then your uh, garlic powder. I use one tablespoon because it's us. We got to use a lot of garlic no matter what we do. That was actually uh, almost a perfect amount of that. It's like it was there. You could taste it, but it wasn't overpowering. Now I got my teaspoon out for the salt. Now if you have very salted uh, pork barley, mine's completely uncured, unsalted. So I went ahead and added the tablespoon of salt and then two of pepper. Now, if yours has been cured, if your pork belly has been cured or it's been salted or smoked, don't add the salt because it's going to be salty enough. All right, so get that. Go ahead and mix it around in your bowl. I made sure not to slow this down and left the audio in just because I know Jack loves that metal on the glass screeching noise. If anybody else that bothers you, I really apologize. I didn't mean to annoy you guys. I was just annoying Jack because I could. So, this is what I was talking about. This is pork belly. It's the same cut as bacon. You can see, like if you slice it, then this way you get bacon. But this is a gorgeous cut of meat. Like even with the marbling in here and the, the amount of fat on the outside. Now I had to break out the big guns. Got the big knife from Andy. Shout out to Andy. Thanks again. Now go ahead and cut these into about a square, like one inch cubes is what you're looking for. Now be careful with your edge. And now I'm going to give you a hint. Like if you're ever cutting a lot of pork, if you're ever actually butchering a hog or something, the meat will start getting gummed up in the blade, like microscopically, like the bits of fat and stuff will get stuck in there. So the trick is to keep a pot of boiling water close by. And then when it stops cutting as well as it should, stick your knife in there. Uh, you can go ahead and test fit this. Now you've got it cut and make sure it fits. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't fit, go ahead and make some more. That's what we ended up doing. Now this is, again, is sturdy because it doesn't quite mix as well and there's a little oil in there more than the, the brown sugar and stuff. So go ahead and put these in here and toss these around give them a nice coat. Now like what I was saying, when you're cutting up a lot of pork, use a boiling pot of water and if it's not cutting as well, put the blade in there and it'll uh, melt that fat and get it out where it cuts it up. It works uh, really well on humans too. So I guess that's just FYI, something I picked up in law enforcement. Uh, <laughs> so if you have to you know, butcher a pig or something, yeah, keep a thing of boiling water if you got to cut a bunch. Uh, I didn't with this. They cut pretty well through the entire thing and ended up cutting all of these. Uh, but give them a nice coat. Just go ahead and put them in your air fryer. You want to use one layer. Get these in here nice and coated. Now, if you want to, you can get you a spoon and put a little bit more of that brown sugar stuff right on top. It'll give a little bit of a caramelization on top, a little bit of a brown, a little bit of a crunch when it cooks. Uh, with the air fryer, you're going to have to flip it anyway. So go ahead and put it in. You want to set it for 400. Right? You can do it in the oven too. Get it for 400, get it preheated. But put your air fryer at 400 and we're going to set it for 20 minutes. Now, set a timer on your phone because you want to come back after 20, in 20 minutes, you want to come back in 10 minutes and you're going to have to turn it, right? Because the air fryer cooks really well on one side, the other side is kind of hard. So look how gorgeous that is. Now go ahead and take it and use flipper or a fork or your fingers if you're brave 
a spoon if you have to and go ahead and flip those over put the meat on the middle as it were put the cooked stuff down and the uncooked stuff up towards the convection area right so get that nice and flipped over put it right back in do the next 10 minutes it's like timed I was like <laughs> with it ticking like that I, I felt like it was timed so after 20 minutes this is it this is done these are outstanding oh my god like this is great for an appetizer thing a single guy a lone meal or uh, just something that you're a selfish indulgence thing that's all about self-care go ahead and do this man these are so good give it a try if you do it differently let us know but man i can't wait to do some more of these and there you have it folks it actually worked and these are outstanding find this try this please do it if you have an air access to an air fryer do it if you have uh an oven man apparently you can do the same thing in the oven just like i said i just put it in you know 400 degrees do it for 20 minutes be sure they don't just sit there outstanding if you do it differently you want to see us do it differently have some other recipes for this kind of stuff hit me up let me know put it down in the comments this is outstanding you can also find us on social media let me know over there find us on facebook pinterest patreon or all those that live in between paychecks kitchen you can also find us at instagram at living between and shorten it there and uh i'm gonna go eat some of these man i'll catch y'all later see y'all next time these are really good mm.